well. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. Oh, it's Friday. Oh, Yay. it's Friday. More, Yay, Friday. More coffee for us. You know I don't drink coffee. That's water. Oh, okay. I'm uh, sorry. More coffee for me. I don't. I don't do the coffee thing. No, I do. Well, see, that's good, because then you get more coffee, and I just drink water. <laughs> more for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Friday, and you know, a lot of people have been working from home, yep. and a lot of people, students, you know, people at work have been using headphones as well. A lot of cool. A lot of yeah. students. Mm -hmm. At home for the last year, we'll see what happens this year. Oh, that's yeah. That's so this true. little feature may come in handy again. Yeah. So it, it's this little thing has a sound recognition, and it was de uh, developed to actually help the deaf and hard of hearing. But now it's being used to kind of help everybody who may have their earphones plugged in. Yeah. So check your iPhone if you have the iOS 14. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the 14 and up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it this this little feature is on your phone, and you can turn it on. And if you're wearing your earbuds, then you have this feature going and you can hear various sounds. It picks up sounds around your house. So if you're like on your computer and you're listening to music or whatever, and the phone rings or uh, you hear a siren outside or your smoke alarm goes off, you'll, you'll actually hear it and it alerts you that, hey, you might want to pay attention to what's going on in your house rather than what's going on on your computer. On your computer, yeah. So this, this will activate for certain sounds, uh, you know, maybe like a baby crying or yeah. you, know, something, you know, something important is, you know, people with young children. So to turn on sound recognition, you know, you have to go to your settings if you have an iPhone, then to accessibility, then scroll down to sound recognition. So if you do that, that iOS 14 update, you can go ahead and go to your settings and- I like the it one out. that has, it, it, it uh, lets you know if you left your water running. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it has the sound of water running. That's So funny. if you, uh, you know, went to the bathroom and then you wash your hands, you forgot to turn the water off in the sink, you go, yeah. <laughs> he'll let you know, hey, go back in there. Important <laughs> things. Well, now we need oh, another yeah. one, like, you know, if your toaster is plugged in or something. That'll be good. I'll come later. Lunch let's, is done. Let's look at today's night at nine. Local hospitals are filling up quick as the latest COVID surge takes hold of San Antonio. An infectious disease expert at UT Health San Antonio urging people to avoid the emergency room unless you are extremely sick. The FDA is expected to recommend a plan for vaccine booster shots for people with weaker immune systems. That plan expected in the coming weeks. The Sturgis Motorcycle Rally returning to South Dakota today. Officials believe the event could turn into a super spreader with over 700,000 people expected to attend. And check your fridge for this Panera Bread at Home chicken tortilla soup. The company is recalling over 6,000 pounds of the soup due to possible contamination. For details about the recall, you can head over to ksat.com. And Yelp has added a new feature that lets businesses list whether they require proof of COVID vaccinations from customers and whether all workers are fully vaccinated. Yelp users can then filter their searches for businesses by those attributes. President Biden's trillion dollar infrastructure bill could get final passage in the Senate as soon as tomorrow. 60 votes are needed Saturday to end the debate on the bill. Olympic sensation Simone Biles back in Texas this morning. She's returned to the Houston area. She came back last night, greeted by a sea of fans waiting near the airport. Biles returned home with silver and bronze. The U.S. women have been golden at the Tokyo Olympics. April Ross and Alex Kleinman cruised the women's beach volleyball team to a gold medal. Women's basketball will play for gold after beating Serbia 79-59. Oh, but a tough start to the NFL preseason for the Dallas Cowboys. They faced the Steelers in Canton, Ohio last night. A number of Hall of Fame inductees watched from the stands, including Peyton Manning, Calvin Johnson, and Jimmy Johnson. Steelers win 16-3. And that's today's 9 at 9. You ready for football? I'm ready. Yeah? All right, bring it on. Bring so it on. Hopefully this, this pandemic thing will... We'll be gone and we won't have to worry about it. We can still get fans in the stands and do all that. I mean, obviously, we've got to pay attention to what's going on, but hopefully we can uh, we can have what would be close to a normal football yeah, season. Yeah, we hope college so. And especially high school and college. Especially yeah. high school and college. And after what UT and OU did, claiming they're leaving the SEC, that means college football is going to be that much interesting. They're not going to be in there yet. But when they travel on the road, can you imagine the fans when, when OU goes to? Uh, oh, yes. OSU mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be good. It'll be very interesting, yeah. Justin. We're getting into like football weather. True today. Texas Tech fan. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Thank, thank you for saying that, Justin. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, uh, well, as an Aggie, we, we welcome the Longhorns in the Yeah, Aww. I'm sure you do. <laughs> open yes. arms, huh? That's right. Yeah. Uh, we've got some blue skies out there as we look towards the airport. Uh, it's been a pretty nice morning. 79 degrees currently. Southerly winds at about 7 miles per hour dew point. Way up there at 75, so it is sticky. And the forecast for today, Texas up to about 90. 30% chance of rain as we get into the afternoon. Things look pretty quiet right now. We did have some showers earlier. Those have since died down. They were south of San Antonio. Still some leftover sprinkles there in Atascosa County, but that's sort of the last of it. And as we get some instability today, some daytime heating, we'll see some additional showers and storms pop up. We'll call for a 30% chance 3 p.m. through about 7 p.m. I'd say. As we mentioned, uh, we top out close to 90. It'll feel a little bit warmer than that. And it only gets hotter from here. Some pretty toasty temperatures over the weekend and next week. We'll take a look at that and the latest on the tropics to another update here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with Trans Guide this morning. There's a look at I-10, Woodlawn, and 281 and Hildebrand. Things are looking great. Top stories we are following this morning. San Antonio police left a lot of questions on the table following a shooting in Northside neighborhood. Right now, they're trying to figure out who shot a man and why. It happened just before 530 in the 200 block of El Monte. That's near San Pedro and McCullough. Police tell us a 45-year-old man was walking down the street when someone in a passing car shot him. He was hit in the stomach and taken to the hospital. Officers found one shell casing in that street, and they're now searching for the suspect. And also overnight, a father and a daughter recovering following a shooting on the east side. Several vehicles were also damaged in the gunfire. Now police are looking for at least three suspects. It happened at the Artisan at Salado Creek Apartments. That's in the 3600 block of Benz Engelman in 35 and 410. So investigators tell us more than 70 shots were fired and the glass from the damaged vehicles filled the streets of the complex. The victims were taken to the hospital and the suspects took off. New incentives to get vaccinated pop it up here in San Antonio. If Metro Health gets their way, you'll get the shot and walk away with $100 in your pocket. Metro Health is planning to offer the new incentive at its pop up vaccine clinics. They are just waiting for the federal grant money to be approved so it can go toward this effort. You can read more about this on KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, a dangerous police chase caught on camera through the streets of Los Angeles and a historic town nearly wiped away by wildfire. Plus protests break out after a lockdown is placed on people in Australia. And if you are planning to travel, be aware of the chaos taking place at airports across the country. RJ Marquez now joining us live here in the studio. Yeah, traveling is... Uh, Ooh, what a mess. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, a a anyone that is maybe going to take a flight this weekend, just kind of be aware of this whole situation going on with Spirit Airlines. It is a disaster, to say the least. <laughs> so we will talk about that here in just a little bit, tell you guys a little bit more about that. But first of all, let's start with this video from a wild police chase in Southern California <laughs> through a neighborhood that came to a quick end with a violent crash. Take a look at that. Ooh, right there, right behind me. So video from a news helicopter shows the driver. We just saw that fly through an intersection. You can see him right there going through there. He then slams into that curve and then flips the car over. The driver also takes out a utility pole and some overhead power lines, a very dangerous situation for everyone around. So he stumbled out of the car and is quickly arrested. His passenger also makes it out and gets taken into custody. Police say the driver was going over 50 miles per hour on those neighborhood streets. It appears as if everyone seemed to be OK. OK, now to Northern California, where a wildfire there has torched and destroyed a historic town that dates back to the gold rush era. This wildfire spreading more than 300,000 acres. It is considered to be one of the biggest in the state's history. So video from the town of Greenville looks like it's straight out of a movie. The fire has been burning for three weeks and spread across several counties. More than 100 homes are destroyed. And of course, several residents have been displaced and looking for shelter this morning. Well, it just got, like this thing goes, all hell broke loose. Uh, my prayers go out to everybody, and it's throughout the whole county. I mean, Greenville's just the beginning of it all. I'm healthy, whatever, and start over. So it'll be hard, but I'll manage. 
Yeah, difficult situation for those residents there and nearly 5,000 firefighters are working to contain this fire, which is being fueled by high winds and dry conditions. Some of those buildings in Greenville were built in the 1800s again during the gold rush era and they are no more this morning. Tough situation. OK, now overseas to Australia, where a week long lockdown because of a rise in COVID cases is now causing protests and clashes on the streets of Melbourne. Protests broke out on the streets after the lockdown was announced and residents actually fought with police, leading to the arrest of about 15 people. Residents have been told they must stay home unless they are doing essential work, buying food, exercising or receiving or providing health care or getting a COVID-19 vaccine. So lockdowns are actually taking place across the entire country. About 13 million people across Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane are now under those mandates. OK, now to the situation with uh, Spirit Airlines. If you thought it could not get any worse this morning, well, you were wrong because the airline is expected to cancel dozens more flights today after canceling roughly half of its scheduled flights on yesterday. So these cancellations are causing major chaos at airports across the country, and this has been going on for about a week now. Nearly 1900 flights have been canceled so far with more on the way. It's so bad that one passenger in Orlando actually waited nine hours just to speak with a customer service representative. Spirit says this is all because of an airline staffing shortage, weather and system issues, but travelers naturally are fed up. One crew member put us on the plane. Nine hours. I'm about to cry. Nine hours. I have never seen such customer service before in my life. When we started canceling, our crews got dislocated through the system. They were in the wrong places at the wrong time. And we needed to start to build that puzzle back together again. Yeah, just a complete mess. So the CEO right there says some travelers, some travelers were offered hotel rooms, vouchers, and in some cases, refunds. Uh, guys, traveling in general is stressful to begin with, but yes. this is just a disaster. <laughs> that is a mess. That's a huge yeah. mess. Yeah, so if anyone out there is about to take a flight, just be aware that maybe a lot of these passengers may be getting on other airlines, maybe trying to figure all that situation out. So it might be crowded on your, yeah, on definitely. your Southwest flight. That too, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Crazy. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, guys. New guidance from the Texas Education Agency, the TEA, saying remote learning can be offered to a student who tests positive for COVID-19 or is in close contact to a person who has COVID. Student testing can be done at the schools with a parent's permission. The guidance seems to be at least partially based on last school year when the Delta variant did not exist in the U.S. as it does now. Yeah, the TEA says based on last year's low transmission data, schools will not have to contact trace, but positive cases will need to be reported to health officials. The TEA says vaccinated individuals will not be considered close contacts. And taking a live look inside the courtroom where the punishment for convicted killer Otis McCain is expected to be announced today. So closing arguments will begin shortly. We will carry some of that live here on KSET.com and the KSET TV app. It is now 9, 10 and 78 degrees still ahead on KSET 12's 9 at 9. It's that time of year. Parents starting to get their kids back in a normal sleep routine, but this go around could be harder than years past because many students haven't had to be in a physical classroom in months. Later, tips from an expert to make that transition a little easier. And also coming up later on, details on a local back to school giveaway happening this weekend. Keep those wallets and purses close by because it's tax free weekend and we already know many students are going to be headed back into the classroom and that means expenses like backpacks, clothes, shoes. We've got you covered just ahead here on GMSA at 9. And welcome back. It's about 915, so it's going to be a busy weekend for shoppers starting today. Shoppers can take advantage of, of Texas's back to school sales tax holiday. The weekend is going to allow parents and students to purchase certain school supplies like clothes, shoes and backpacks free of state sales tax. Alicia Barrera is live at Academy Sports and Outdoors off of Vance Jackson and Loop 410 looking for some deals. Alicia. Looking for some deals. So I don't have any kids of my own, but I do have a niece and she's coming back from her summer vacation. So I'm going to do some shopping around here for her because these are some of the items that 
are tax exempt, so some long sleeves to keep her warm during school. But we know that some of the hot items are going to be like shoes, uh, backpacks even, because every little bit counts. So we came to Academy just to put some few things in my cart. But on your screen, I want to show you what is tax and exempt. And again, that includes items like backpacks. We know kids have probably been without one for quite some time since most of them are doing virtual school. Uh, baseball caps is another item that is tax exempt, maybe some jerseys. Um, of course, we talked about it shoes, uh, blouses, boots even. So anything that your child needs, uh, you want to take advantage of this weekend because again, every little bit that you can save counts. And especially we know parents have had such a difficult time this year, but even like these uh, cute little lunch boxes here, this, it says um, adult lunch bags, but that's okay. Uh, this is something popular for the kids. I know stuff. Rooney is getting ready for school, so I know parents like you are going to be very busy this weekend. There was actually a line outside of Academy. I did speak to those in line, and they tell me it wasn't for tax-free weekend, or maybe that's what they told me because they didn't want to be on camera, which we <laughs> understand. But, Steph, how's your shopping list coming along? Are you going to be doing any tax-free weekend shopping? Well, we're, we're done because we have Meet the Teacher today. School for uh, Rooney starts on Monday. Uh -huh. A lot of parents uh, will have, will start later with the other districts, but so we had to have everything done by today. In fact, I have to pick up a few things uh, when I leave here <laughs> to complete the list. But yeah, we're almost there though. Well, good. And that's the case for some of the parents that I did speak to outside. They said that they're done. They got it done before because they don't want to deal with the crowds. So if you are going to be shopping this tax-free weekend, of course, be a little bit more patient. But for some parents, it's definitely worth it. Back to you guys. Almost oh, definitely, especially if you have several kids to buy for, that's several school supply yeah. lists to complete. Thank you so much, Alicia. And I guess when you're shopping like indoors, mm -hmm. it's okay because the AC is going, but when you're in and out of your car, it might be a little hot. Well, if you weekend. have to stand outside and wait for the doors to open. <laughs> that's true. Little, but no, but it'll be early in the morning, not warm. in the afternoon. So well, Here's what I want to know. Okay. Yeah. We always have to buy the number two pencils, right? Yes. Uh -huh. What is a number one pencil? What does that do? Has anyone ever used that? It does nothing on those tests you take because you have to have a number two pencil. <laughs> Gotta have a number two. Up. There's a guy always trying to skirt well, the rules. Well, you know, number one. I've never actually like I don't paid attention to the other options. I, th I don't think there are I, any. I don't From think so. When either. I was back then, when you need a number, I think a number one is like a lighter shade. It's not. Ah. It's not as dark as a number two pencil. Well, Speaking I, from experience, I think. There you go. But I'm not. I'm not real sure. Back when I had, you had like one pencil, and that was it. Now I'm going to pay attention. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Uh, I, sorry. I'll Things report back to you about mind. it. What does a number three look like? I have no Very, idea. A marker. I don't want to find out. <laughs> it's going to anyway, go right uh, through your paper. Find out. Let's talk statistics here, guys. Uh, rainfall since June 1st, 7.45 inches. Uh, that is above average. Uh, th this accounts for yesterday's rain, by the way. And for the year, uh, we're in really good shape, uh, over 22 inches. And that's about three inches above the average. That's at the airport. There are other places that have gotten more rain than that. Uh, the summer, uh, as we've been seeing for several weeks now, has been uh, really pretty good to us. The live radar. Uh, it tells us that uh, most of the rain that we had earlier has since dissipated. That's uh, moving out of here and uh, we, we're just looking at partly cloudy skies. Here is the setup. So we have high pressure off to the west. That's not really going to build in. It's not as if a heat high is going to sit over us next few days, but it's close enough to keep us pretty toasty. And the last system that helped to generate the rain yesterday moving away. So we're losing that lift. There's enough moisture around today that I still think we'll get some isolated showers and storms, but the, the activity is not going to be as widespread as it was yesterday. Water vapor also tells a story here that uh, we've got some drier air moving in in the mid levels of the atmosphere. That too will help to kind of squash rain chances a little bit today. Uh, we had that one little complex of showers and storms try to move north. That has since uh, dissipated as we just showed you with the radar. So uh, things are quiet for now, but the computer models do want to continue to generate some isolated stuff this afternoon and that's going to be with the heating of the day it'll be hit or miss 30 percent chance that's what we're going to go with this afternoon and i think the best chance is probably about hondo katua east and that does include san antonio as we get into tonight that will start to die down and then after tonight rain chances are gone uh, there's the scene outside that's pretty uh, we've got some low clouds there in the distance uh, but blue skies over the airport right now 80 degrees uh, feels like 84 when you factor in that dew point of 72 and looking at the satellite picture 
those are the clouds we're, we're looking at in the distance. You can see the clearing right over the airport. Uh, low clouds down to the south too, so there will be some off and on clouds this morning. I think though as we go through on out through the, the course of the afternoon, uh, we'll see partly cloudy skies. There will be enough sun there where heat index values may jump up close to 100, especially Pleasanton over to Gonzales, where the humidity levels are extremely high. Still lots of moisture in the soil from these recent rains too. So there's a look at the rain chances. 30% shot through 5 o'clock, 90 degrees your high temperature. And in the tropics, uh, we've been talking about this last couple days, still a couple systems worth watching. This one though, Hurricane Center is now backing off a little bit. They had some uh, higher percentages earlier, now a 60% chance of development. Still way out there with plenty of time to watch. 94 degrees tomorrow, 95 Sunday. Hot next week and no real uh, signs of, uh, of rain chances there after today, guys. No more rain. All right, so I did some research. Mm -hmm. Okay. Google. Mm -hmm. Mental Floss website says that uh, manufacturers make a number one, a number two, a two and a half, a three and a four. The higher the number, the harder the core and lighter the marking. So a oh. one is like darker than a, than a four. Oh, is. got it. So, okay, so, not lighter. But the lighter, two is darker. like perfect the softness of the two yeah. and then the markings of the two work on all those like tests like the Iowa basic skills test well do y'all know what yes I okay. know okay like those, those <laughs> tests like, no. yeah. Yeah, okay. anyway. either way just follow the rules apparently the number two pencil is the perfect pencil yes. for all the stuff you need Good to know. School. Just, so, just follow your so list Justin just buy a two yeah, yeah. you'll okay. be fine Speaking of school supplies, still ahead on GMSA at 9. For a lot of kids, including my daughter, school oh. starts on Monday. So we're going to take a look at how she's getting ready for the school year. Uh, she gets to take the panda to school. That's right. And welcome back. It's about 925. So it's happening now and it's going to be happening for the next couple of weeks. And that's going back to school. Members of an east side church are making sure they have everything that they're going to need. They've been gathering school supplies, everything from crayons to backpacks. And this weekend, the Greater Faith Institutional Church plans to give it all away. The giveaway is tomorrow from 11 a.m. until 2 in the afternoon. The church is located at 3514 Martin Luther King Drive. SAISD starts the school year on Monday. And a lot of students have been getting ready for the first day of school, including my daughter Rooney. And on the to-do list for the start of the semester was finding all her school supplies. Hi, I'm Rooney, and I'm going to second grade. Look, a unicorn and a And me and my mom been shopping for school supplies. I gotta pick my hands a tizer. I think I'll pick this one. Panda is my favorite animal. You know how cute they are. You want to cuddle with them. And here they are. My panda, my notebooks, Baby Yoda. Yep, I like Baby Yoda. Of course. Cutest. And also our headphones, of course. Binky, huh? In the back. You see this girl right there? And these? They're enjoying these headphones and pencils, and you need erasers just in case too. Colors, of course. Now we have post-it. You know, I don't know what these are for, but I'm sure they're for good use. Have fun with your school supplies, and maybe I'll see you at school. I forgot. Have a good school year. Bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Watch where you're going, Rooney. <laughs> so she's okay. Nobody was hurt in this filming, but yeah, she had a great <laughs> nobody, time. <laughs> nobody was hurt in the filming. No. She had a lot of stuff. Yeah, that was all, well, except for the, the panda backpack, everything was on her school supply list for second grade. So she needs to come back and tell us what she used those stick-up notes for, because <laughs> she doesn't know yet. That's the only it's thing funny, because we use them. I don't think yeah. she recognizes them in, in the package. In the package? And okay. not, yeah, that, that was She'll pretty probably have them all over her room and all over the classroom. Yeah, well, I mean, she will. She will once when she realizes yeah. what it is. So, yes. and, and good luck to her, and good luck to all the kids yes. going back to school on Monday. Yes. And all the teachers. <laughs> and all the teachers and parents. And when you're getting ready to go to work on Monday, I'm going to start reminding you now, yeah. there's school zones out there. Slow down. Yeah. Slow down in those school zones. Get off those phones and pay attention to these little kids going back to school. Definitely. They're ready to roll. So Be careful out there. Yep. And a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Hey, a rough start for the Cowboys. A recap of last night's Hall of Fame game coming up.
Also after the break, tips from a local pediatric neurologist on how you can get your child back on a healthy sleep schedule just in time for the start of school. With kids heading back to an unpredictable school year, we want to make it a little easier for your family by talking with experts about scenarios you might run into as a parent. Today we are talking about sleep. It is extremely important for kids to get the right amount of sleep, but what if they have trouble getting back to a normal school schedule? We bring in Dr. Samia Ahmad with the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, well, first of all, what, what do good sleep habits look like for kids of all ages? Yes, no, that's a, a very good point to begin with. Uh, good sleep habits start with having an age-appropriate bedtime so that you can have, uh, or your child uh, can have the appropriate amount of sleep. Um, in the case of like elementary uh, school kids, that would be about nine to 12 hours of sleep. Uh, middle school would be about eight to 11 hours of sleep per night and high school about eight to nine hours of sleep. So once you know what time you have to wake up in order to get ready for school, you count backwards and set a bedtime. Um, and then, of course, you have to have the good habits to go with it. So one really good habit is to dim the lights an hour before bedtime. That will help with the natural secretion of melatonin, uh, which is the, the hormone of sleep, and it's uh, released with darkness. So no overhead lights, just a dim table lamp about an hour before bedtime. Um, turn off electronics 30 minutes before bedtime and use that last half an hour to wind down, uh, maybe take a bath or shower, change into pajamas, brush teeth for the little ones, maybe read to them, and then turn off the lights and, um, and go to sleep. And next, a lot of parents might be wondering, how does diet play a role in sleep? Yeah, so one thing to avoid would be caffeine, um, especially maybe after about 2 to 4 p.m., uh, because that obviously will help, uh, you know, that'll keep children awake. Another thing to avoid would be um, excessive sugary foods before bedtime. Um, if you have a child that maybe you're dealing with, like, bedwetting at night, you may want to um, decrease the amount of fluids they take in about two hours before bedtime. And what happens if a child has trouble or just simply refuses to get back on the sleep schedule? Oh, that's really, really common. Okay, so you want to make sure that um, there's something. Uh, first, find out you know what it is. Is it um, something like snoring um, or like tossing and turning in bed, like restless legs or something? Something that your doctor needs to evaluate. Uh, but if it's just like what we call bedtime resistance, or kids who just want to go to bed later, um, <clears throat> then um, you you want to um, you know work with those habits. Maybe for the younger kids. Uh, you want to um, give them some um, some incentive to go to bed earlier, like, hey, if you go to bed um, um, early, you get a sticker on your sticker chart. And if you keep um, going to uh, sleep on time, um, you're going to get a larger reward by the end of the week. Like maybe we'll, we'll go to the park, you know, Saturday morning. Um, so, so some of those habits will try to get your kids back in bed. Another really good idea is because children tend to have um, uh, kind of uh, disrupted sleep routines over the summer. So a couple weeks before school starts, you want to start getting them towards their um, uh, their ideal, their goal bedtime. And um, for some kids, it might be every night you have to move their bedtime earlier by about 15 minutes every two, three days until you reach that um, uh, that bedtime. And at the same time, making sure that their wake up time is being moved to the right time as well. Um, if you have older kids that are really going to bed very late, like four or five in the morning, um, you may need to move that clock the other way, as in like a little bit um, forward, uh, just because, you know, kids um, have um, a, a very difficult time um, uh, going to bed, uh, you know, after they've, they've uh, been uh, going to, you know, deranged bedtimes during the, the school, the summer vacation. Yeah, definitely. That's challenging. I can see that, especially with the older kids, um, you know, and finally, you know, how can parents, you know, overall get their children ready now with some schools starting actually on Monday? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. If school is starting on Monday, I would relieve that family stress first. So if you need to tidy up that room, um, take out last year's books and papers, um, set your backpack, um, if you've outgrown your pajamas, get the right pajamas. Um, if you need to get your school supplies, your backpack ready, get all of that stuff done first uh, because um, you don't want that stress coming to you at night. Um, and then if you want to still, um, uh, if you have just a couple days left, right? So start moving that bedtime to the right time. And I think if you've got someone who's really, really off the chart and they're asleep, um, and they're, um, uh, you may have to kind of just like move that bedtime a little bit forward, meaning like if they're going to bed at like five in the morning, maybe, you know, move it to six, seven, eight, until they're like, their bedtime has now come forward until like about 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. And of course, their wake up time has to be earlier as well. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to get ready for the first day of school. My daughter starts on Monday as well. So we appreciate all your advice. Dr. Ahmed, Samia, uh, Samia Ahmed, sorry. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Taking a look outside with live cam. <laughs> Looking pretty bright out there. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is laughing about going well, to sleep I was just going to say, I, I, <laughs> I wish all the parents luck getting those kids. I mean, she has some great advice, but good luck getting those kids go to bed yeah, on it, Sunday. It can be a challenge. Monday. We have good intentions yes. as yes. parents. We do. Yeah. It uh, doesn't yes. always work out that no. way. Uh, that was a beautiful shot there on our live cam. Some clouds in background, blue skies over the airport. Uh, it, it's turning into a pretty nice morning. I want to take a look at some of the rainfall totals from yesterday. Good rain uh, over a large portion of the area. It's places like uh, Stinson picked up over two inches. Sutherland Springs over an inch. Carrizo Springs over an inch. This was pretty widespread. And then the, there was a little bit more rain this morning down near Catula. But of course, when you have rain, this is the uh, the issue that we have to deal with. Mold, very high, 13,160. And looking at the satellite picture, most of the rain is gone. Seen a few uh, returns here or there, but a lot of that's probably ground clutter. So we're going to see a break for now. There are some more chances though as we get into the afternoon. With some daytime heating, there's enough moisture out there that some of those clouds may bubble up into some downpours. Temperatures today warmer than yesterday, up around 90 and the heat really cranks up next couple of days. Uh, space Station flyover coming up tonight. We're going to have some details on that here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, thank you very much. We've been talking about back to school this morning, and it is back to school tax-free weekend. The weekend holiday allows parents and students to purchase certain school supplies, clothes, shoes, backpacks, free of state sales tax. Alicia Berrera joins us live, and she's filling up her cart at Academy Sports and Outdoors off of Vance Jackson in Loop 410. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I was going to really fill it up, but I started doing the math and kids are very expensive. So I want to show you what I've um, gathered here. So we talked about the leggings earlier. Uh, and again, I don't have a child, but I'm shopping for my niece, I guess. Um, a sweatshirt added on there and then a long sleeve shirt because she's always cold like me. I added a cute little lunchbox and of course a matching backpack. And what I noticed, all the backpacks now have that laptop sleeve. Um, and last time I remember Remember when I was a kid, backpacks weren't this expensive, but that's okay. The total here is 172, and then we're gonna add some shoes, and the cheapest shoes I could find were these for 12 bucks. So we're gonna add those to the cart. Um, so that would bring my total up to, let's see, 184. So we would be saving about $15. And I spoke to some parents who say it's really worth it. On your screen, you're going to be able to see what items are also tax exempt this weekend. So again, it starts today. It goes on till Sunday. So you do have a few days to um, keep shopping before your, your kids go back to school. So again, that includes items like backpacks, really any essentials that they really need. Um, other things like jerseys, that's also included, of course, like cleats, because a lot of the students will be going back to their athletics and extracurricular activities. So lots of opportunity to save. Um, Steph, I don't know how you do it. I know Rooney loves frilly cute things, and I try to keep it as basic as I could for my niece. And man, that is a hefty price tag. But like you said, a lot of parents already got it out of the way or looking for some sales. It, yes, Alicia, definitely a challenge. We're a little lucky in the fact that <laughs> she has to wear a school uniform. Otherwise, she would yes, really, yeah, exactly. She would yeah. really be like, no, I want this. I want that. I want that. So at least we could keep that part of it, you know, on on point. <laughs>
Thank you, Alicia. Good Controlled. Luck. Yeah. You, you kicked out guys. some great things. Yeah, <laughs> bottom line is you save it, save whatever you can. Yeah. It all adds up. So. $15. Yeah, that's good, good job, Alicia. Yeah. Your niece is going to be super happy. Great picks out there. 941, 79 degrees. And you're watching Jim SA at 9. Well, the Cowboys already 0 1. Recap of last night's Hall of Fame. It was preseason. And we're going to look at next week's game as well. RJ's coming back for that. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. So the first preseason game of the year kicking off in Canton, Ohio last night with the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. RJ's back to talk about the opener. Former Cowboys head coach Jimmy Johnson getting into the Hall of Fame and getting another induction soon. So Ooh, that's yeah, the good Jimmy. news for the Cowboys last night. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy is going into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, uh, that is the big news. Jimmy, along with two other members of the Cowboys organization, going into the Hall of Fame. Two members from the 70s Cowboys, David, that have finally gotten their ticket into Canton. And so, of course, big game last night, start of the season. Of course, it is just preseason, but still good to see some football is back. And of course, always good to see Cowboys taking on the Steelers, one of those iconic classic rivalries here. And getting to see some of the rookies get some action here. Micah Parsons with a nice fumble recovery there. Remember, he was the Cowboys first round pick playing linebacker for them. And David, this is going to be all about who is going to be Dax number two. Uh -huh. We saw Garrett Gilbert get some action. Yeah. He had a couple of nice drives there, let them down Did to he? a field goal. <laughs> well, full disclosure, <laughs> well, I and did then not we got step Cooper and Rush. watch the game last night because if they're not going to play yes. 16 of their guys, then I'm going to give about a 16th of my attention, and that was zero. So that was zero. zero. <laughs> so, no, that, that, is, you know. that is for sure because no Zeke. We saw no CeeDee Lamb. Yeah. We saw no Mari Cooper, yeah. Tank Lawrence, all these yeah. guys just yeah. out. Uh, Steelers yeah. end up winning this thing 16 to three, mm. and let's just hope that Dak stays healthy this year because I don't think people want to see the uh, the Garrett Gilbert or the Danucci era. Again. Oh, we saw the Danu we saw enough of Danucci last <laughs> he year. Did. Didn't we? He did, yes. Yeah, okay. That's good. Um, so of course, there uh, Steelers take care of business. The next Cowboys game, preseason game, is going to be a week from today at Arizona, and of course, the season kicks off on September 9th. So getting closer. Yeah, we can't yeah. wait for the season to kick off because it's preseason. Yeah, but really, guys, the big news for the weekend, of course, it is Hall of Fame weekend out there in Canton, Ohio. Um, and, of course, uh, Jerry Jones is there. We saw Jimmy Johnson. He's going to get his gold jacket into the Hall of Fame. David, just uh, some quick thoughts here oh. on Jimmy Johnson. I know you covered him. Aww. Those early 90s Cowboys team, what an amazing collection of talent that he put together. I still remember the first time. They were still uh, training. Mm -hmm. in Thousand Oaks, California, when Jimmy became the head coach. That was, that was, it was just a totally different atmosphere with him out there bringing that, that college routine. And everybody's mm -hmm. kind of like going, this is not going to work in the NFL. And here it worked. And I remember when, I remember when he got, when he got fired. That was two days. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was there waiting for that, that to happen. as well. But the thing about it is they won the two and then he gets fired and they win the third. If Jimmy yeah. would have stayed there, if they could have like, figured out a way to deal with their egos, Jimmy and Jerry, uh -huh. they'd have won five, six probably. Super Bowls yeah, in the they 90s. Probably and there's players that'll tell you that today. There's, there's opponents that'll tell you that yeah. today, that the yeah. Cowboys could have dominated the entire 90s if mm -hmm. those two could have figured out how to w a way to get along. But uh, he definitely deserves being in the Hall of Fame, and he deserves the other honor he's got. Yes, yeah, so too. this was some big news yesterday. Jerry Jones finally announced that Jimmy Johnson will get into the Cowboys Ring of Honor. Not sure why it took so long. Maybe David kind of alluded to that. There was a little bit of uh, tension there yeah. between the two. No yeah. date has been given when that, when that actually will happen, but Jimmy will become the 23rd member of the Ring of Honor for the Cowboys and just the second head coach, of course, behind the great Tom Landry. And we talked about it earlier. Jimmy coached the Cowboys for five seasons, winning those two Super Bowls and just an unbelievable collection of talent. There's so many Hall of Famers from uh, that team. Troy Aikman, yeah. Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, of course, the triplets, just, the you golden know era. Time heals all wounds. So <laughs> that's true. Good. But he deserves to be in both those halls. So it's, it's yes, great to see yeah, him up there. Yeah. So. Thank congrats you. to right. those yeah, guys. Congrats. Oh, Drew Pearson, Cliff Harris also getting in. There you go. Oh, yeah. nice. All right. We're Cowboys. There you go. We're Thank Cowboys. you, RJ. Go Cowboys. Go Cowboys. Yeah. How about them Cowboys? What do you think, Justin? Sure. Sure. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> I agree. It didn't look so great last night, but we're no. hopeful for a good right. season. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's take a look at the Space Station flavor. You can check it out tonight. Uh, it'll be about 8.57, lasts about seven minutes, disappears to the north, or appears from the north and west, disappears to the south, southeast. Kind of cool to see. We should get the clouds out of here in time if you want to check it out. And uh, we are 
in line for a couple of showers this afternoon and this evening. Uh, looking at the setup, here's what we've got going on. Ridge pipe pressure to our west, area of low pressure to our east that's moving away. That helped to generate some showers yesterday but it's getting out of here. This high pressure is not going to move over us. We're not going to see a big heat high next few days, but it is going to be toasty uh, and there's not a lot of chances for rain really anywhere in the seven day forecast after today. Today there's still enough moisture in place where we could get some of those clouds to bubble up into something. Uh, high temperatures today in the 90s. This is more typical of August. You remember last couple of days we were showing this map and high temperatures are in the 80s in a lot of spots. We're starting to return to more uh, average temperatures. Still a little bit below average here though, and with moisture in place, it's going to feel like 96 when you factor in all of that humidity. There's the satellite picture, satellite and radar, but the, anything on radar, most of that has uh, gone away. And so we're just left with a bit of morning cloudiness and some uh, clouds here and there are breaking up kind of over San Antonio right now. Another little patch of low clouds from Vaughn Army uh, over towards Elmendorf. A beautiful scene though as we look out over the airport. Blue skies and temperatures 80 at uh, the airport and at Stinson up to 81 now at Randolph with the west southwesterly breeze at 6. So we're already jumping into the 80s in a lot of spots. Still some 70s for Bernie Stage Comfort and Kerrville. Out towards Del Rio you're at 80 as well. 81 right now in Catula. When you again factor in some of that humidity today, the heat index could jump above 100 in a few spots. And this is just uh, sort of the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, uh, because we're, we're going to get uh, heat index values going above 100, I think, over the weekend and into next week. So the forecast, uh, as this computer model sees it, partly cloudy skies around lunchtime, not much of a threat for a shower, but with the heating of the day, we should see some pop up downpours develop. And I'd say Best chances are going to be Kerrville, Hondo, Carrizo Springs, East. Uh, and uh, we'll have partly cloudy skies. Not everybody's going to see rain today. It's only about a 30% chance. High temperatures close to 90, as we mentioned. Southeast chilly winds 5 to 10. Your extended forecast, 94 tomorrow, 95. Sunday, great weekend to hit the pool. And then it's back to school. That was a rhyme. I, like that. I feel good about it. Uh, 94 Monday, 95 Tuesday, mid-90s Wednesday, and Thursday. We'll be right back. And here's a live look again. We want to remind you that closing arguments are underway in the Otis McCain trial. We are expecting the punishment to be announced today, and we will carry it live here on KSET when it happens. All right. We're done. Excited. Well, no, are we done yet? No, I think we're going to talk we about done? this crazy fish. Oh, we're going to talk about this crazy <laughs> Not fish quite, first? David. Yeah. Hey, there you go. We don't wanna, we don't, <laughs> Ready for the weekend, Ready David. <laughs> Here's a way to start. Do we have the other picture. Oh, there he there is. There he is. What okay. is that? That's a fish. That's a fish. Those the guy caught though. it off of uh, the, a beach in North Carolina. Yeah, and that's why it's making headlines because it it, <laughs> it looks photoshopped, but it's yeah, it's a crazy looking fish, and this uh, happening in North Carolina. Uh, it's oh, what is it called? It's right here in the article. It's called. It's been identified as a sheep's head. Yeah, so I, I'm not very familiar. Yeah, I, don't, I don't fish a whole lot, but um, yeah, I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah. I knew a guy looked like that in high school. Oh, David, oh, see, no, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not nice. Here we are going back to school. We can't be talking I mean, about people like hey, that. I went to high school in another state. They don't. Oh know. my goodness. I guess be nice. Y'all have a great weekend. Have, have some fun. Weekend. Laugh. Enjoy. See you.